Chad, there's something I'm, 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 I'm going to talk about and look at, but I, 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 I'm going to see this. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Looks like uh, Neil is coming in five by there. Uh, 11, uh, Mike, see you in the background. If you don't believe that humans ever landed on the moon, you'd probably think that on July 16, 1969, a select group of government officials, a crew of filmmakers sworn to secrecy, and a famed Hollywood director named Stanley Kubrick all gathered on a soundstage in a military base deep in the Nevada desert, better known as Area 51. And here they pulled off the greatest hoax in history. You'd probably think that astronauts, or should I say actors, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins fled this rocket through a secret passageway just before it- Guys, I, I don't I don't actually think that- guys, 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 I'm a moon landing denier, denier. So I'm two mm. plies. I deny that there's denier. There's no- I don't even believe that, there, that people deny the moon landing. I don't think they're the real people. Guys, I don't think they're real people. I'm a denier's denier. No shot anybody that that, that, that well, it didn't happen. I, I don't I don't refuse to believe it. Off for space, totally empty. And you would have to believe that the estimated 400,000 people who were involved in this mission are all lying together, it, all promising to take this secret to their Three grave. Ahead. You know, Jeff, I, 22% I of Americans either don't believe that we landed on the moon or harbor some doubt. To the 22%! The we looked at the tapes and the countless photos. We talked to astrophysicists, meteorologists, and NASA historians to better understand the moon landing conspiracy, how it started, what hoaxers use as their evidence, and what this belief teaches us about why some conspiracies are so enduring. Oh my god. Guys, guys, it's not even the one landing. They went to the moon like fucking like seven times or some shit. They went to the moon a bunch of times. It's not one landing or four, whatever the final number. They went to the moon multiple times. Look, oh my god, look at this chat. Wait. Okay, um, real quick. One of the big revolutions in science in recent decades. How many times have we landed on the moon? Um, six. Now it says Apollo 11 was the first crew mission. There were six crewed US landings between 1969 and 1972. Fake news. Uh. Is an understanding of our minds. We have learned more and more that our minds are actually just unaware. an organ called our brain that are like any We're other muscle. They can be trained and retrained now, and redirected. And that doing so dramatically changes how we see the world and how wait, we wait, I, I, I couldn't read because of Donald dumbass is are like any other muscle they can be trained and retrained and redirected and that doing so dramatically changes how we see the world and how we experience the world this has led to the whole field of mental health which is honestly not oh, much oh, oh, oh it's an ad, it's an ad, it's an ad read it. chat guys I'll leave you in chat guys stop acting like you know better I literally just proved you all wrong that the people that said question mark. We went to the moon a bunch of fucking times, dude. There's no, there's no point going back at one point. They, they did everything. They, 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 they did everything to be done was done there, dude. You can still say question mark. Yeah. Okay, yo. Okay, yo. What the fuck is wrong with this chat? How did they come back? They didn't. It's the whole point. It's a... A lunar mission is is a uh, uh, in the name you can Google it, the lunar mission means that you go and just to die. You send the data back, and then all right. So to give you some context on the moon landing, 
I need to briefly explain World War II and the Cold War, which is something I've kind of done a lot on this channel. So oh. instead of me doing it again, we hired someone with an old timey like radio transatlantic accent to do it instead. Buckle up for this one. In a world on the brink of destruction, the United States of America joined the Allied forces in the Second World War in 1941. The Big Three, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and now the USA versus the Axis power, Italy, Japan, and Nazi Germany. They sure did put up a fight, but the Allied powers came out on top, you see. But then America and the USSR got real cold with each other. A tragic reversal of the old tales of enemies turned lovers. The I remember that, yeah. The United States to be exceedingly aggressive and quite trigger happy with all their new military power, meddling in things they ought to be keeping their noses out of. Across the pond, the capitalist United States was fearful that the USSR was hankering to spread their communism across the whole globe. The war remained cold only because both powers had Ch thousands of them. Ch yes, yes, yes. Maybe I don't, I don't, I don't understand politics. Why, why, did, why did the United States always, like, is, I don't get this concept. They don't, they don't like another system, so they go and stop its growth somewhere else because it's not theirs. I, I don't really get that. Like, I, I just don't get it, dude. The most deadly weapons humanity had ever seen and wouldn't dare. Why, does it, why don't they just do their own thing? They, they like, they like, guys, they, they like the, the fucking capitalism, just do it, do it, and, and, and with a squad, and then, I don't get it. Them against each other. It was something of a horrifying stalemate. Am I missing, a, am I missing something? Soon, the empires turned to other feats of strength. Psychological warfare, spying. Let me pause it. Guys, guys, if, if communism, according to them, is, is the war system and it is bad, and why don't they let them do it and let them fail and let their country fail? That, that, makes, that makes them more powerful if they let people fail with their shit system. So why do they stop its growth if it's, go if it's dog shit? Then just get the free advantage, yo. Proxy oh, they did it. And a race to advance their technologies. And to top it all, a race like no other. A race to space, space, space. This is a little bit uh, poorly first, explained. It's very clear that the Soviets are winning the race. They're launching dogs and plants into space and bringing them back alive. They send up satellites that orbit the moon and take photos of the far side that no one had seen before. They even put a human up into space Wait, to orbit around. around. Uh, last, uh, last pause. Guys, guys, the reason why it's fully explained is they didn't explain why. Well, what is the actual reason? Why, why is there a race to space? Why? It's very important to understand why is it important to land on the fucking moon? Why is it so important? Around the entire Earth. The first space flight would be made by a Soviet man. The U.S. needs to catch up, so President High Eisenhower ground. creates a brand new government agency High ground. dedicated entirely to space. It's called High Ground. It's a display. Yeah, you're right. It's a display. This is a display of power, not only ego. It sh it shows you have High Ground. You, you, if, you, if, you can, if you can do that, you have superiority. You can control space, you, you, you're, you're better. Boom. It means that you, have, you would literally have high ground. And yes, ICBM potential, because in order to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile or whatnot, you have to go to space. Yes, you have to go to space. The rock has to go into, the, into space. And they eventually That's right. send up satellites and even That's right. people. But they don't get someone to orbit the entire Earth like the Russians did. Womp womp, the US is losing the space race. And this is where JFK gets up in front of the nation and declares that the US is setting a goal. In this decade, we shall make up and move ahead. He's declaring what would surely be the ultimate finish line in this global race for power. We choose to go to the moon in this decade. An American astronaut eventually orbits the Earth. Not because they are easy. Russia then puts the first woman in space while also getting the first person to walk in space. But because they are hard. The NASA teams are pulling all-nighters year after year, trying to figure out how they're going to make good on JFK's big promise, to somehow get a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Things are heating up. Time is running out. What a speech, though. And then... Boom! 
NASA's disaster was a major setback, but the stakes were too high to give up. The space race had become much more than a technological rivalry. Winning the race to the moon would mean winning the ideological war for the world. Would it be communism or capitalism? They couldn't give up now, so they kept going. In 1968, NASA finally gets a spaceship, the Apollo 8, to orbit the moon with astronauts aboard. There's hope. Russia is able to exchange a crew in space. For both sides, a moon trip suddenly seems within reach. Hold up, chat. Guys, you know chat, guys, guys, Apollo 8, whatever? Guys, I think, I'm, maybe I'm right about this, maybe I'm wrong. I think they had multiple lines of, 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 of construction and they, they were doing it simultaneously. At one point, they were so far behind that they had, they had to skip and skip ahead, right? They had to like jump some certain iterations of the program and go to the net. No, am I wrong? Oh, that's wrong, okay. But who I heard that somewhere in the documentary first? somewhere. I, Richard Bill House, next to do Solomon Square. And then, after My hundreds eyes. of millions of dollars and countless focused hours by the country's brightest minds, comes a morning on a summer day in Houston, Texas in 1969. Ten. Ten. Three men buckle up. Nine. Hundreds of millions of people around the world buckle find up. themselves glued buckle to their room. television sets because the greatest achievement of mankind might happen. Then starts the five, four, four three, three Two, one, zero, all engine running. I saw the green screen, by the way. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting their roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Roll complete and a pitch is programmed. I mean, that is cool, though. That looks the fucking rocket sick. Heads towards the finish line. That pearly orb that humans had stared at and mythologized about, fixated on. And they're finally going to touch it. Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Just for you. Four days and 200,000 miles later, it's July 20th, 1969. Months before JFK's deadline was up. Two of the three astronauts disconnect from the orbiting ship and descend onto the moon's surface. And then... There you go. Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. Oof. These fumes. The race had clearly been won. A line had been crossed, not just for the global superpower who did this, but That's for crazy, all though. humans who had just taken their obsession for exploration to new heights. But right away, after this event, even though it was broadcast on live television for the whole world to see, there were rumblings of doubt. About a year after the landing, you start to see newspaper articles casting doubt that any of this actually happened. Two years uh. after the landing, we see James Bond running away from a bunch of security guards through the Nevada desert when he somehow stumbles upon a secret moon landing film set resulting in this moon buggy car chase thing okay, through the desert. Okay, dude. It was all a tongue-in-cheek reference to this budding conspiracy that the whole thing was faked. A few years later, a former U.S. Navy officer and Apollo rocket technical writer comes out with this book. I think it was an intuitive feeling that what was being shown was not real. The book is a long evaluation of evidence that claims that we never actually went to the moon. This book makes the case that the moon landing was so political that the U.S., having failed to develop a feasible plan to get to the moon, pulled off this secretive staging of the event, all as a propaganda play to get ahead yeah, of Yeah, but all that makes sense, though, but you have to prove it, though. the point that, you know, it's the Cold War, it's not that far-fetched that the U.S. government would come up with some deception campaign in the name of beating communism. Yeah, that's saying so this guy really needs money because his family is dying. He's getting foreclosed. Guys, this guy really, really, really needs money. Therefore, if he got money, he robbed the bank. Now he did though, he did it. Because he really needed it though. He really, really, really needed it. And that's how he got there, dude. And, that, and fuck it. I mean, dude, Which is like j just a display of need, it doesn't mean that, that, that it proves the fucking pathway there, dude. What the fuck? Totally fair, actually. But that's not evidence, that's just speculation. He does go well, on right to then. present a bunch of photos 
and explanations that turn into the foundation of what would become a widespread theory that the moon landing was faked. The lunar landings were more than likely fabricated. Why wouldn't the moon landing be faked? You know, why wouldn't we fake that? We did not. Oh my God, dude! The moon. The moon? Yeah, it's fake. And I would bet my life on it. This is actually the oh, reason I wanted to make this video, is I wanted to understand what the foundation of this conspiracy theory actually was. The people who truly earnestly believe it, what do they think happened here? I'm not going to go through all of the evidence and theories here because they're kind of all over the place, but let me show you some of the major ones. The first major one starts here. How come there aren't any stars in this photo? There's no atmosphere or light pollution on the moon. Shouldn't this photo look XQC like this? F. Well, it turns out that if you want to capture the stars, even on the moon, you have to open up your camera for a very long time and let a bunch of light in. Trust me, I know this because I spent months of my life trying to photograph a galaxy and I learned a lot about how not to photograph stars. And let me just tell you, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. When I was doing that, I was opening up my shutter for 30 seconds and I took hundreds of images just to get this one shot. So when you're on the bright moon and you're trying to photograph a bunch of guys in bright white reflective suits, you're not opening up your shutter for a very long time. You're not letting in a bunch of light. There's basically no chance of getting a decent shot of the stars in this environment. But you get something. I mean, if you take the photo and blast up the brightness, you can kind of see some traces of the stars if you really need to do that. Okay, but what about these shadows? Okay, some of these sure. shadows go this way and some go this way. Shouldn't that makes sense, be yeah. parallel if they're all coming from one source? Yes, I just thought if the moon is bright, isn't the brightness of the moon reflecting back into the shutter? And then you're, then you're getting light? I don't get it. If you're the fucking... Yo, if you're saying, oh, dude, dude, uh, I'm not getting any light because we're far... From, because of the sun. Well, if you're on the sun, you're gonna get light because you're on it, mother sucker. What the fuck? What the fuck? If you're on it, you're gonna have light, right? I mean, you're probably gonna... Right? It's the sun. Yes, the only light source in this photo is the sun. But you have to remember that light bounces off things, especially white things. So you have light bouncing off of lots of different surfaces, which is one reason the shadows look a little weird. Oh, and remember that you're looking at light that was filtered through a lens. A camera lens distorts the direction of things depending on how wide or tight it is. Okay, but what about this flag? This flag is waving, but there's no wind on the moon. Yes, the flag is kind that's of waving. That's because of the material that and this shit. Is a normal flag. NASA account. had to make a custom yeah. flag for the Apollo missions that had a horizontal rod right up here so that the flag wouldn't look like this. It had to look nice and American and patriotic. You had to be able to see it. So when the astronauts were sticking the flag in the it's lunar gonna soil, wobble. the motion of that movement caused the material to move and it kind of looks like it's waving. Well, okay, no. but look how they're moving. This is so unnatural. It's almost like they're being pulled up by a wire. Oh, and look, did you catch that? That looks like a wire. Okay, wait, just confession here. I was watching all of these conspiracy documentaries like while we we're doing this story and they're like incredibly tantalizing. This is the one that actually kind of got me. I was like, wait a minute, they are moving really weird. The motion is so off kilter. It looks like they're being like dragged by a wire. So to figure this out, we actually talked to a physicist and a meteorologist who helpfully explained just how different life in one-sixth Earth's gravity is. I mean, think about it. Our intuition for everything we know is calibrated to Earth's gravity. It's everything we've ever known. It's how our brains interpret the world. It's how our muscles calibrate to the world. So when you're watching these videos of these astronauts in suits that weigh 180 pounds clunking around with their Earth gravity trained muscles on the moon, True. you see some really weird weird movements. But I mean, who knows? Maybe the two scientists we talked to months, are actually in on it. Maybe they're months, some of the months. half million Americans who are paid by the government Chai, guys, to I, keep guys, the hoax alive. Guys, I hate to ask. Also that we could feel like America is better than- Guys, what about the balls? What do the balls do? Think about it then. There's no gravity and shit like that. Like, they, they just float? In the Soviet Union in 1969. Maybe. Could be. Okay, listen, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these theories. There's a lot of evidence out there. Like, why isn't there exhaust on this flame? Or why did the Eagle Lander not leave a crater? What about the radiation exposure that these astronauts would have gotten? What about Neil Armstrong's boot print? Or the lost tapes? Don't get me started on the lost tapes. We actually had a whole section in the script about the lost tapes, and ultimately, it didn't make the cut. Now listen, 
Uh, I want it to be clear that you should not be ashamed if you actually want answers to these questions. Especially in a time where all true. of us are kind of renegotiating our relationship with trust in governmental institutions. But I will tell you that after earnestly looking into this stuff, We're just true none of the presented evidence comes anywhere close to the burden of proof and evidence I would need to see to believe that the moon landing was a hoax. I will put resources in our source doc of the many instances of astrophysicists and scientists Wait. walking you through all this stuff. Chad, you would only need one thing. The burden of proof would be one singular discrepancy. One. I think it's useful to look at. Before we move on with our story of the conspiracy theory, let me use this moment to say a word about human neurology and visual information, something I think about a lot. For me, when I sit through the evidence-based debunk on these theories, which is something we did for this story, it helps me understand the limits of human senses. Our eyes and ears and logical thinking brains this is are optimized for very different problems What's than that? evaluating the physics of our fellow homo sapiens jumping around on a baby planet 200,000 miles away. Like, we're not set up for this stuff. Going through the conspiracy theory and then going through the debunks reminds me why we as a species developed other ways of sensing other ways of measuring and knowing things about the world. Other tools Hooray. that aren't as intuitive to us, but that extend our power to know things that are real, that are true. If you don't lean on these tools, uh, in other words, if you don't look to science in your evaluation and instead rely on your optic nerve feeding grainy pixels into your great ape brain, I think we can all agree that you'll take for truth things that are not true. Okay, neurology section is over. Let's get back to it. If you're going to go down this rabbit hole and indulge your conspiracy mind like I did for this story, let's talk about what people think actually happened months. here. I mean, dude, like, all of this. Me. Dude, 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 dude. Don't people trust like medicine and stuff like that at the very small molecular level and like, and like vaccines and shots or syringes and a bunch of things that are very small. A bunch, a, a million things that are small. Everybody trusts that, but they won't trust... The other thing, I don't get it. Isn't that the same sort of type of a, a barrier to visual like that? This footage and all of these photos. Molecular, what the yo. Think we're like the, 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 the um... One of the most common explanations is that the U.S. afraid that they would be embarrassed in front of the global stage because they would fail on JFK's big promise, hired a famed Hollywood director, Stanley Kubrick, who had just released a groundbreaking space movie, and they used his visual skills to deceive the world, filming the moon landing on a soundstage in the middle of the desert. I mean, look, this rock has a perfect C on it. Is that a prop? These misaligned shadows, they explain as studio lights. The flag was waving because there was air conditioning in the studio. And these photos were actually taken by Stanley Kubrick. So these guys are saying that there's mastermind, insane, crazy, hired specialist experts to make all these sets happen and they would forget the AC on the set? Ah, oh, please, man. Taken come on, by man. Stanley Kubrick's come on, come on, bro. All of these movements, they say, were done with wires and slow motion. And that black starless sky is just a black cloth backdrop. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 1977, the conspiracy lag. theory had spread Fucking lag. enough that NASA had to come out and issue a fact sheet responding to the claims. The first sentence of which is just, yes, astronauts did land on the moon. But then a movie comes out in 1977 about the government faking a space mission, this time to Mars, to save face to the American people. But the space race was over. It wasn't the focus anymore. And eventually, yeah, no so was the Cold War. This moon landing theory became more and more fringe. But inevitably, like any other good tantalizing conspiracy theory, it was eventually repackaged and put into one of these really spooky, cheesy cable news documentaries. In 2001, Fox News aired this documentary. On conspiracy theory, oh. did we land on the moon? It was basically just a repackaging of all the old theories, but for a new audience. But now, it was the dawn of the internet age, and NASA had to respond to this Fucking Fox, Fox News, news by reissuing the fact sheet that they issued in 1977, but this time on a website. An innocent foreshadow to combating information on the internet. 
They had no idea what was coming. The doc gave the conspiracy new energy, new followers, and soon a conspiracy theorist was following Buzz Aldrin around a hotel, pestering him and demanding him to swear on the Bible that he landed on the moon, and Buzz punched him in the face. Shortly after that, a French mockumentary came out, laying out evidence that Stanley Kubrick did film the moon landing. The problem is people thought it was real. There's a fake documentary, not a real documentary, but a fake, like a mockumentary, where he's admitting and people are talking about. Uh, Have you seen that one? No, but that Okay, okay. Sense. Chat, you know what, Chat, guys? I kind of fell for that last time, Chat. Guys, we watched a, an actual fake, uh, fake debunk, right? And the whole video, at, the, at least the whole three quarters of it, the, is that they did the same thing they mocked, and I, I fell for it, dude. I was like, no wonder that fucking dumb, dude. And I, I was like, this is our fucking brain dead. <laughs> it was too yeah, a lot the of whole thing was ironic. No, there's an actual real interview with him where he admits <laughs> that he faked the moon landing. Uh, but it's not. Yeah. It's just, it's fake. So today, the conspiracy lives on in a world of increasing science skepticism and on an internet that fuels pretend information and to a demographic that is more and more mistrusting of institutional knowledge. One poll found that in 2019, 11% of American millennials believed that the moon landing was staged. It's become a particularly durable conspiracy theory because it has all of the ingredients of a good conspiracy theory. It's shadowy. Question chat, guys, guys here's the way they could have debunked it. They put a telescope, go to the moon, right, looks at it. And when they go to the moon, they put a fucking bomb on it, right? They leave moon and they give a timer. It's like, guys, every, all, t all, all, all people of the, of the earthing, look with your telescopes at the moon at this spot. We're going to fucking detonate a bomb on it. And then boom. And then it proves that they actually put the bomb physically because every country can see it now. Boom. They now prove that they were on the moon, mother sucker. Bing bonk. Government antagonist with political motives. It leans on the human eye and brain as the primary measuring tool for the evidence. And when you believe in stuff like this, it feels good, like you're in on a secret. So let me just end this video by telling you why I know we landed on the moon. On the yeah, how do you know that? Did he go there? Was he there? Was he with them? You are looking at a very thin section of moon rock, magnified 500 times. First off, we brought back 900 pounds of rocks during the Apollo missions. The Soviets, who were our technological and geopolitical enemies, eventually sent a robot to the moon to collect samples of their own. These precious rocks are sent out to scientists and educators 400 times a year to be studied and examined. And it has been verified by a lot of different people who have no motive to lie that these rocks were developed in an environment completely rid of oxygen. Also, the Soviets themselves corroborated the moon landing and acknowledged that it happened. I mean, the Soviet leader kind of begrudgingly complimented the US and they published like a tiny little blurb in one of their newspapers, but like, they lost and they admitted they lost. Also, if I'm gonna rely chat. on just my human brain logic for a second. Yeah, chat, chat, the people who really want to win, right, of course, they had all the, all the things to fake it, but the people who lost, why would they give them the win at that point if their whole point is to win themselves, right? I think, I think that's, that's proof itself, right? Kind of? Think about it. There were hundreds of thousands of people who were involved in the Apollo missions. Scientists, engineers, physicists, policymakers, mathematicians. I'm cooking. All working day and night towards this goal, obsessing over every detail and then monitoring every step of the way from Houston, Texas to the surface of the moon and back, communicating with the astronauts the whole time. So imagine two Texas Motor Speedway stadiums full of the brightest minds in the country all in on the Left biggest turner. deception Left of turner. Left turner. without a single leak. And finally, if you insist on using your eyeballs as your only sensors that you will accept as proof, just look at this. This photo was taken by a telescope orbiting the moon. These are astronaut and buggy tracks here on the surface of the moon. You can even see the buggy's parking spot right here. Or, 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 since you're zooming in with a telescope, these are literally microfibers on the telescope's lenses, creating an overlay over the picture you're and looking at. And if you think that this photo, that yes, was originally taken by NASA, but many other photos have come out by other space stations that show physical evidence of humans on the moon, if you think that this is still the government, like 40 years later, the kids and grandkids of the Apollo people still photoshopping pictures to keep up this elaborate ruse, I don't know what would convince you.
And then next video, they said that this was AI generated and then checkmate because you believe the whole video and the whole thing was fake because it, it was AI the whole time. Boom. Actual checkmate then. I enjoyed the video though, it was really good. You should check this one out. Interesting. Take crazy 3 billion views. XQC. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Um, What's this? This was a fun video to work on and we have so. Yeah, the Android Live was really good chat. Link in the chat.